Welcome to February's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is divide two integers. Given two integers, dividend and divisor or divisor, divide two integers without using multiplication, division, and mod operators. Return the quotient after dividing dividend by divisor. The integer division, blah, blah, blah. Basically, the quotient is going to be the floor integer of our answer. Now, one note, assume that our integers are within the 32-bit signed integer range. And for this problem, uh, assume that your function returns 2 to the 31th power minus 1 when the division result overflows. Basically, if our answer falls outside the range of both either side, positive or negative, then we want to return the floor or the, or the ceiling of 231 minus 1. Okay, so if we had this problem here, dividend of 10 and divisor of 3, how can we solve this without using the divide function? Well, if we did it straightforwardly, what we do is subtract 3 as many times as we can until the, the divid dividend is less than 3, right? Once that happens, we could count up the number of times we were able to subtract and just return that. So that would be a, a, an O of N solution, assuming that N is going to be the number of times we can divide here. Uh, so let's go with that solution at first. Um, what we'll do is first make these absolute values so that we can account for the positive and negative. And later on, we can check to see if one of these is negative. And if it is, then we could flip our answer to be negative instead. So what we'll do is get the absolute value of dividend here. Same with the divisor, call it dv. And later on, we'll check to see if only one of them is negative, and then we can flip our answer. So output will start off with zero. So if we did this straightforwardly, we would say while d is less than or equal to divisor, we would subtract from d the divisor, and we would add to our output one each time. And once we do that, we can just return our output. But we also need to make sure that um, one, we need to check to see if one of these are negative. So to do that, we can just say if dividend is, let's say, less than zero and the divisor was greater or equal to zero, then we want to flip it. Uh, if it's the other way, where divisor is less than zero and dividend is greater or equal to zero, then we'll get our output and we'll make it equal to the negative output, this. So this would work, but it's not very efficient, right? Oh. No, I'm sorry, not less than or equal, it's greater or equal to. Yeah, so here we go. This would work, but it's very inefficient. Like, what's some ways that we can make this more, more efficient? Well, one way we could make it a little faster, say that we had some large number like 10,000, Instead of subtracting 3 every time, what we could do is exponentially increase it by itself. So we can multiply this by 2 and count up the multiplier um, by 2 as well and subtract that. And that would make the number of loops we have to take logarithmic. Uh, we can't use multiply though, so instead of multiplying by 2, we can just add it to itself. So that's what we'll do. We'll, have, we'll do it in two loops then. What we'll do is say, okay, while d is greater or equal to dv, we'll have some sort of temp variable that's going to um, increase each time we run a loop. And we'll also have a multiplier that starts at 1. We'll say while d is greater or equal to temp, what we'll do is subtract temp from d first. To our output, we will add the multiplier. And then with the multiplier, we'll <coughs> add multiplier to itself as well as the temp. Uh, this way, we'll avoid having to run too many loops. And once we, once our temp variable is too great, we'll start over and we'll start over like from the bottom and increase it each time like that. So that would also work. That would be actually uh, lo log n instead of n. Uh, so let's make sure this works here. So that looks like it's working. Now, one thing to note is I do need to take care of some edge cases. Uh, say that we were given some value like, I don't know, like this and negative one, something like that. Uh, this would actually fl flow out of bounds. Oh, no, not this one. If we did this, this would probably flow out of bounds then, right? Hmm, no. Oh, maybe I got this wrong. Okay, maybe this is going to work. Let's make sure. Nope, okay. 
Yeah, so here's an example where it would flow out of bounds. So, um, we get our output and we get something that's going to be out of bounds here. So uh, just to take care of that, what I'm going to do is uh, return the minimum between this number and this, but I also need to get the maximum uh, of, I believe it's negative, this one here, to make sure we take care of our edge cases and we don't flow out of bounds. So let me sure, make sure that works. I believe that was working. Let's go and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So this is a log n solution and it uses constant space. Now, there are some more clever, beautiful solutions using bitwise operations where you can shift and stuff. But technically, I think it's debatable, but you could argue that bitwise is actually multiplication. So I don't know if that would count. And plus, I don't really like bitwise solutions, so I'm not really going to go into there. Um, I think this is the most straightforward and typical solution. So that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.